David, first of all, how does it feel to be in this position again? Very proud. Again, I, I don't want to repeat myself from 18 months ago, but I, I'm a very proud man to be asked by the board and the chairman and the owner to take the team. Um, at the same time, it's always a tough time when any manager loses his job because um, I've been in football forever and when any manager or coach loses the job, uh, you know one day that could be you. Um, so it's, it's tough, um, but it's the business that we're in. Um, but from a personal point of view, I'm a, I'm a very proud man sat here, um, fit and able to, to lead the team and to lead Everton out for, doesn't matter how many games, um, I'll stand there a proud man and, and, and give it everything I've got. Overall then, what is your reaction to the decision to let Ronald Koeman go at this stage? Well, everybody will have their opinions, and, and, and quite rightly so, because football is, is, an, opinion, uh, is an opinions game. Um, the bottom line for, for any manager when they lose the job is that did you win enough games and unfortunately we're in a position where you know you're going to say no we didn't well, no we haven't um, but you know at any football club if you don't win enough games your, your position will always um, be the subject of, of much debate. You've been caretaker here before you've been caretaker in your time at Preston as well in the managerial capacity obviously. Um, with that in mind how difficult a decision was it to accept this role? It's not a difficult. It's 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 it's, it's a very easy um, decision to make. I spent the afternoon with the chairman yesterday. We spoke everything Everton uh, from how many games to individual players to plans for the short term, long term. Uh, we spoke about everything. So I had a great chat with the chairman. Um, but it's not a difficult decision at all uh, to to stand as Everton manager. Um, if you're an Evertonian. That makes you very proud. So you I take it then you still want this job full time and with regard to that then what has the chairman said to you? Well, I'll repeat myself from last uh, last time I was sat here 18 months ago, who wouldn't want this job? Uh, it, it is a wonderful football club with amazing fans and it is a top job for, for absolutely any manager, uh, myself included. Um, the chairman has given me an opportunity, Farhad has given me an opportunity, the board have given me an opportunity to hopefully get a run of games where performance levels go up and, and we produce some wins as well. Um, from that, you know, you know, performances and results will dictate uh, any future for me as Everton manager. You obviously sense then that it's an opportunity to show you're ready to make the step up from the under-23s. Yeah, yeah, I, I want to manage. And um, this is an amazing club to be, to be manager of. But yeah, I think I think the time has come to to say that uh, I make no secret of it, secret of it at all. Uh, I want to manage. Um, however, I do have a wonderful, wonderful job. Um, that that is a challenge and it's something I really enjoy. So what will be will be. Um, I'll just do my best on the training ground every day and, and within the games with the staff that I've got, with the players that we've got, and we'll we'll try and win a few football games. You will know as well as the chairman that successful managers in trophy terms since the war. Have been former Everton players. That's well, a good omen, isn't it? Well, let's hope that's the same, <laughs> the same case this time round. No, it's a great stat, isn't it? Um, it's a stat that I'm aware of. Um, so let's hope I can follow Joe Royal and, and win something. In terms of lifting the squad at the moment, what have you said to them today? Well, Steve Walsh and I got them in this morning. Um, Steve spoke to the group, and I wanted to speak to them on my own. Um, I did. I, I didn't. I don't really want to divulge what I said because that's between myself and the players. Uh, we went out this, this morning at 11 o'clock and we, we had a great session. Uh, the spirit was great. Within five, ten minutes of, of the ball rolling, um, the, the players were fine, they were buzzing and I felt it was a really good session. Very uh, similar to last time when we took the team, the, the players reacted straight away. Uh, we've done a little bit of work this morning on the ga on, for the game tomorrow and we'll travel down to London this afternoon. So yeah, I, I felt it went really well this morning. I've obviously seen you a number of times at Goodison Park. You see the home fixtures at the very least. What do you feel then has been the root of the problem this season? Well, we'll all have our opinions and we'll all look at individuals or formations. The, the bottom line is we haven't won enough games. Um, performance in a, performances have been OK uh, for spells. I don't think there's been a, um, 
a lack of effort. I think the commitment for the, to the cause has been there. Um, we just haven't won enough games, and, and it's very, very simple. Um, it, it, it's a collective thing. You know, we a lot. I hear a lot of people talking about a lot of different things about what the problem is. The problem is the team hasn't won enough games, and 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 we have to burn the responsibility together. Not not down to individuals leaving, individuals not coming in. It's a team game, and we we burden that together. Obviously, a lot of people point to a number of players coming in this summer, not necessarily hitting the ground running, and you see the likes of Sigerson, Klass and Ramirez as names that are, that are mentioned. Why do you think it hasn't quite happened for that group of players who, who have come in this summer? I, I think it's always difficult when new, uh, when new players come into a team that's struggling. Now, um, the team hasn't been playing particularly well, and we haven't won enough games as, as this club would expect. So for any new player... Uh, that's always tough. A, a new player would obviously, ideally, want to come into a team and a squad that is performing and winning games because it, it, it's a lot easier and your confidence is is high. I think confidence looks low on certain individuals. But it, like I said, it's it's not. You know, I don't want to pinpoint any individuals. I don't want to pick anybody out to say, well, you're not playing well or he's not playing well. It's a team thing, and as a team, we haven't performed as well as we should do uh, and not won enough games. How long then? given that you spoke to the chairman yesterday, you had to really formulate any kind of game plan for this game against Chelsea? Well, from that last night, um, I, I, I got the staff in and, and we started talking about it yesterday afternoon, yesterday evening, uh, and we were in early this morning um, and put something together and we've spent an hour and a half on the pitch this, this morning as well. So uh, we'll con continue to talk this afternoon and, and, and while we're in London tomorrow. Uh, but I've, I've got a good idea of... of of the team and, and how I want to play and and the way the Everton fans will respond to the way we want to play. You're not getting much time between games either when you think about it. Oh, you obviously Leicester at the weekend, then it's Leon again, Europa League, Watford then, and it's into an international break. No, I, I mean I think that's you know I think that uh, has to be said. But you know what time we do have to have is we have to have quality time. We have to be fully prepared. We probably have to work a lot harder as a staff off the pitch now. Um, because of the fact that the, the games are coming thick and fast, we haven't got a, as much time on the training ground as we would we would want. But you know, the players will take on board the information we give them, and you know, we'll have to try and keep it as simplistic as we can in between games because they are coming thick and fast. Have you been given a set number of games as you understand? No, Vinny, I haven't. Um, you know, the chairman just asked me to take it. Uh, he's gonna he's gonna talk to me every day. Every week, uh, we'll you know we'll discuss it all the time. Um, there's been no points total or or number of matches. Um, you know, I've just been honoured to ask to take the team. So hopefully, there's a run of games. Hopefully, there's there's a run of games, and and like I said, results and performances will probably dictate that. And when you look at as well at the competition that you face for this role, certainly the names that are being mentioned in the bookies' odds at the moment. Um, what do you make of the competition that you're facing? And then, does the club need a change of direction in so much as the last two times they've gone down the foreign manager route? Is it a time to go back to a, a British manager? I think the club needs a winning manager. You know, that's that's very, that's that's, that's simple. Um, you know, uh, yes, there's some very good foreign coaches in the Premier League. There's also a lot of very good British coaches, British managers around as well. So, whoever gets the honour of, of of having this role has to win um, so we want a winning manager and we want a manager who knows the club and you know more importantly will win for this club and, and win trophies because that's what we need just to check who's working with you John Abril and Joe Royal yeah John uh, Joe is um, will, will probably uh, join us as well Duncan is with us and um, I managed to bring in Alan Kelly a goalkeeping coach uh, last night he um he did great, and he got the uh, the last flight over from Ireland, and I interrupted a family holiday, so I apologise to his family, but um, <laughs> he's uh, he's with us this morning. So yeah, Alan, I know Alan from my Preston days, and, he, and he's a great goalkeeping coach. So uh, Alan's joined us as well. On the under 23s tonight. Well, I'm not taking that. <laughs> I was going to say I'm I thought not... you could have maybe doubled up <laughs> and got uh, on to Chelsea from there. Franny Jeffers is is taking that tonight, so he's he's been working with us all season. So Franny will take that along with uh, a couple of other coaches as well from the academy. And in terms of the players you got available, obviously Gay suspended from the weekend, but Schneidlin injured still, McCarthy a possibility. No, James and Morgan both trained this morning and both available to play. And Ross Barkley, what does the change of manager maybe do for his future, and where's he at in his battle to regain fitness? 
Well, I spoke to him this morning, I spoke to him yesterday, I saw him in the gym, he was working really hard, he's, um, he's coming along nicely. Um, from, my, from my opinion of Ross's, I would love him to stay. I would absolutely love him to stay. He's, he's a top talent. He, Everton has, has done great for him. He's done great for Everton. Um, but he could be one of the all-time greats here. Uh, and I would love him to be persuaded by myself, by, by the chairman, by, by Farhad, to stay and, and sign a contract because we, um, you know, we shouldn't be losing players of his quality. He's a, he's a top player and he's a, great, he's a great player that's come through our ranks as well. And I um, feel very strongly that we, we shouldn't be losing our own players. Do you get the impression then that he's more open to staying than he was last season? I've not spoken to him about that since, since um, I spoke to the chairman yesterday. I will be doing. I'll be sitting down with him. I'd, I'd love him to um, sit down, have a cup of tea with me, and, and, and discuss the possibility of of signing and staying here because um, we love him, and I know he loves Everton as well. Um, so, you know, I want everybody to come together, and, and hopefully, we can thrash something out with Ross. Hi, David Ollie Foster from Hi. BBC News. Um, you said the lads were buzzing, and within five minutes, they were getting back in the swing of things. Um, what has the atmosphere been like around the place when things just haven't been working in the last couple of weeks and months? Really? I couldn't tell you because we, we were, were separated from the first team. We train uh, on a different pitch and uh, they have a, a separate building now. So I couldn't actually tell you quite honestly how the, the mood has been day to day. Um, what I've seen from my own eyes is performances that have been OK. Uh, we just haven't been, we haven't been winning enough. Um, but I couldn't actually honestly tell you what it's been like because the first team are, are on the other side of the building. You talked about the performances and you see the com you think the commitment's been there as well, but obviously it's a question of results. Do you feel that with those new recruits, well, 140 million quid's worth over the summer, it might have clicked given another bit more time for Ronald? I'm sure Ronald will tell you that you know he, he thoroughly believed that, um, and who knows? Um, just because you spend money doesn't give you any desire, any desired right to, to win a football match. Um, you've got to earn it in the Premier League, and you've got to earn it by, by sometimes not playing nice football or not. You know, you've got to battle to win every single point in the Premier League. So just because you spend, you know, an amount of money, it doesn't give you any guarantees that you're going to, you know, play winning football. Um, but the the demands of this club determine that you that you have to. So um, even though you spend the money. You've got no right to, to win any game, um, but we, what we've got to do is get back to winning ways. Um, so whatever team we put out, um, be it the big money signs, or you know we've got to come together as a team, and uh, we've got to start winning some games. Are you excited with that group of players when you look at them on paper, working with them? Do you think they've got what it takes to to get your heads back above water? Well, I certainly enjoyed working with them this morning. They were you know, very receptive to the, to what we were doing. Um, the quality was there. The, the the atmosphere was there that we would want. So you know, if, if first impressions of a new squad, you know, certainly there's there's different players here from when I when I last took over. Uh, first impressions were really good this morning. A lot of criticism has been in the spending that Romelu wasn't replaced like for like. Uh, do you see that's going to be a problem with where your goals are going to come from? Yeah, I'll go back to the point I made earlier about it, you know the, the team. You know, the the team has got to chip in with the goals. You know, we've got to play in a way that we create more opportunities to give the you know certainly the strikers that I've seen been playing the opportunities to score so you know the, the way I want to play um, you know I certainly want to I certainly want to create more opportunities than we have been doing and um, it's not just the strikers responsibility it's everybody's the team's responsibility to get the goals you know and we, we must we must uh, emphasize you know we need to create more a few, um, a few former players have come in, people who have worked with Ronald and said he was essentially a fair weather manager and when times get tough he didn't have that ability to pick, pick players up and, and put a smile back on faces. I mean you, you come across as an incredibly positive guy, do you think that's going to be part of your role in these early stages of however long this uh, managerial stint lasts? Well first of all I think that's a little bit unfair on Ronald, I think Ronald um, has been a, been a world class footballer and he's a very experienced manager and, and he's achieved levels of success in his managerial career. I can only be, you know, what I am. Um, you know, I, I will certainly take on what I do with the under-23s into the first-team environment because I, I don't want to be anything that I'm not. Um, I've got to give myself the best opportunity to help the players to win a game of football. Um, 
So I certainly won't change my values and what I believe is is right when I'm setting up a football team, and I'll, I'll take on board what I do day in day out with with the under 23s uh, into the first team environment. Sorry, just just one more. When Farhad uh, gave Ronald the job, what was it, 16 months ago? It was he kind of inferred that it was because he wanted a star on the touchline, somebody of the ilk of a Mourinho, a, a, a Pep, just to have that kind of standing to lead this club forward. How do you sell yourself? Because you're not that kind of manager yet, are you, on, on the world stage? No, I, my, my profile is, you know, from a managerial point of view, is, is not. But you need to win. Um, and, and Farhad, the chairman, the board, they want a winning manager. Um, so I could be anybody. You know, if, if you win, you know, you keep your job. Um, so I certainly want to try and perform and win and help the players to, to get to the position where we can start winning games again. Thank you. David, I just wondered, what do you think you can do with these players that Ronald couldn't do? Oh, well, I have a set of values, a way of playing um, that, like I just said, I, I want to take into the first team environment. Um, I'll keep those to myself and to the players, if you don't mind, because um, I think that's the right thing to do. Um, sometimes, you know, a change of manager gives a squad a lift. It uh, gives a set of players a lift. Sometimes it doesn't. Uh, but I won't change what I believe in. I believe the, the game should be played in a certain way. I believe the Evertonians want to play in a certain way. I know that. I've, I've been there. I've done it. Uh, and, I, and I need to use that experience as a player here. Um, you know, the expectation level, the way, the, the way an, Evert, an Evertonian wants to see his team playing. Um, I'm certainly going to pass all that experience on to the players. Um, in a in the right way, is that going to involve big changes immediately? Then, and are you able to do that if that's the case at this stage of the season? Big changes, no. You know, maybe maybe tweaks here and there. Um, and like I said, we I need to try and spend as much time as I can with the players on the training ground, um, or or in meetings, just just getting my point across, and and hopefully they take on board that information and produce it in games. Okay, guys, uh, if we can just uh, end the TVs there, please. Thank you.